Thanks, Jerry. And much appreciated uh, vertical events for the uh, opportunity to talk today. So thanks again. Forward-looking statements. We're really targeting major high-grade gold system with near-term production. So we're talking about the Kew district. We're talking about a 20 kilometre long shear zone. We've had multiple high-grade discoveries. We've got multiple high-grade intersections, 11 at 54, 21 at 21. We've only had about two kilometres of that 20 kilometre strike tested. So 10% we think it's been tested to roughly about 60 metres depth. We've got a resource base of 440,000 ounces currently, and we're growing that. There's four third-party mills within trucking distance of our resources. Ultimate goal for us is to find another great Fingal. Two million ounce ore body at roughly 10 grams. Great Fingal is 30 kilometres north of us. We're 100% owned by Musgrove in the tenure, combination of MLs and ELs, with the deposits currently sitting on granted mining leases. But multiple targets to be tested. We're drilling at the moment, all round year access, and we're well funded. As I said, we're cashed up, we're currently drilling. Current discovery costs are roughly about 20 bucks an ounce. Our current EV is low, we're sitting about four, 45 bucks an EV ounce. Industry averaging roughly around 90 for explorers and producers are sitting at about 95. You can see where we're located, about 40 kilometres north of Mount Magnet and south of Megathara on the Great Northern Highway. Excellent infrastructure. Takabiana Mill, West Gold, Cookie has got up and running again, so that's running again now, 1.2 million tonnes per annum. The Chequers Mill that Mark has got running and has been running for many years down at Mount Magnet, 1.7 million tonnes. You can see the highway running up through the centre of the project area. The southern part of the project where we've got Breaker Day and Lena is the gold focused area. The northern part is more copper focused. This talk will be all on the gold. Just comparing the setting to the Great Fingal deposit. We've got a first order structure, the Cutting Warra Shear, running directly up from Mount Magnet, directly north. We're sitting on a splay, second order splay off that. It's very similar to where Great Fingal is sitting, as you can see, 30 k's north. Similar metamorphic grade, primary structure, secondary splay, host sequence, Tholiotic basalts, high MGO basalts. Host rocks. We're looking at Great Fingal as a dolerite, Gabbro host. Generally, we're sitting basalt, but what we're seeing with some of the new data is sitting under the lakes. We're looking at granophilic dolerite sitting under the lake. Similar alteration, quartz load systems. <coughs> Break of day, 200,000 ounces, over 50% of that in indicated category. We're growing that resource. A dual vein system, we've got a combined 800 metres of strike on the veins, multiple high grade chute plungers as depicted in that diagram. The resource at the moment roughly only to about 250 metres vertical depth, we're testing and drilling that below that depth at the moment. You can see some of the intersections there, have good strong grades and widths you know, from 6 metres to, uh, to 30 metre intersections, but generally over that 10 gram mark. We also have the Lena deposit. You can see sitting out to the west there in the purple and roughly about 150,000 ounces sitting at Lena at just under two grams. As I mentioned, twin sub-vertical loads at break of day, the twilight load and the velvet load sitting there that's roughly down to 250 metres. We're testing below that at the moment. We've also got a number of intersections we've just drilled outside the resource boundary, including that 11 at 54. The long section at break of day, so it's a combination of combining both the loads into a single vertical plane, and you can see the chute orientations there. We've got a, a steep plunging chute off to the south, sub-vertical chute in the centre, and then a shallow north plunging chute as well. 
So they, the sh these chutes are controlling the high grade within the deposit. And we're currently drilling at depth below the resource boundary that you can see there. And we're drilling down at roughly around that 300 to 350 vertical metre mark. And those, those, those green dots at the bottom of the image. So everything in colour there is above five grams, including the red that's uh, above 20 gram metres. One hundred and fifty metres further to the west, we've got the Lena deposit. So roughly two point six million tonnes at about one point eight. Again, some high grade components exist within Lena. You can see some of those high grade intersections on the left. We're near surface, so gold within a couple of metres of surface, and we've got a strike roughly of about one point six kilometres at Lena at the moment. We're open down plunge in multiple high grade plunge shoot directions look very similar to the plungers we're seeing at break of day. And at the moment, only tested to about 200 vertical metres. Just south of break of day, we've got the Louise target. So we've hit four metres at 15 grams at Louise, uh, relatively shallow depths at 70, 79 metres down hole. So geochem anomaly, you can see down at the bottom there, it's 500 metres of strike, it's 250 metres wide. You can see the break of day, shear zone on the east side of the image, that dotted line, and then the Lena shear zone on the west side. Uh, more drilling needed at Lena, at, at Louise, sorry, but um, uh, um, very encouraging early results. Excellent infrastructure in the district. Um, as I touched on before, we've got the Checkers Mill, Romilius, Habit Mount Magnet, about 40 kilometres to the south. 40 kilometres to the north, we've got the Tuckabiana Mill. A cookie's got up and running at Westgold. Further up the Great Northern Highway, you've got the Bluebird Mill, also run by Westgold. And then a little bit further, the Andy Well, currently on care and maintenance, held by Doray. We've got really strong gold producers around us, Romilius and Westgold. Romilius are tracking dirt from the Vivian mine 300 kilometres away at roughly 7.5 grams. So we know we can track dirt a long way if the grade's there. Break a day is roughly 40 k's from Mount Magnet at 7.1. West Gold, developing Big Bell underground. It's 3.7 grams per tonne. It's about 40 k's away. The West Gold Mill has been refurbished, as I mentioned. So really, for us, there's multiple potential processing options. We want to get to be a standalone operator, but there are options for us through toll treatment, profit sharing, or all sale as well. The metallurgy, it's been exceptional. 96 to 97 percent recoveries in CIL. Of that, the outstanding component is really the gravity component. In fresh rock, we're getting 73 to 84 per cent gravity recoveries. And that gives us op optionality up front for a, a standalone gravity circuit. It also suggests low reagent use and reduced processing costs. We're also seeing no de deleterious elements in the ore. And as an example, just a gold pan from the RC chips, uh, you can see a beautiful gold tail on the back of a quartz load. From a regional sense, we've got 20 kilometres plus a strike of this shear zone, break of day and Lena. Of that, we've got about 12 kilometres on the Salt Lake to the north, and we've got about eight kilometres of it sitting on residual soils. Depicting there in the yellow is a 100 ppb gold contour from shallow drilling, shallow air core and rab drilling, generally down to about 40 vertical metres. So we've got anomalies all the way up and down to break a day and leaner shear loads. You can see where break a day and leaner sit, Louise, 750 metres further south, and then we've got prospects to break a day south, Leviticus, Berlin and Numbers. Um, historical drilling, shallow drilling at, at Berlin, we've just looked through the records and we've got an intersection there at three metres at 9.6 grams per tonne of gold, shallow rab drilling and never followed up with basement, basement drilling. 
So lots of opportunity up and down, up and down this belt. We step out again. What we were looking at previously was that eight kilometre circle at the base. You've got a section roughly about 12 kilometres there under the lake and then we get another further section to the north in regolith again. So lots of potential there under the lake. We've recently done a regional gravity survey to help us define targets up and down this belt and we integrate that with the magnetics and the historical shallow drilling and geochemistry. We think there's only 10% of this belt has been basement tested. The gravity survey is depicted there. So again, you can see the area of regolith to the south and then the area under the lake as we head north. Break a day in Lena, following the, that low in the gravity and the shear zone as it gets offset by structures as we move further to the north. Again, searching through the historical records, uh, we're seeing anomalies that we're linking with the magnetics, the gravity and historical shallow rab and air core drilling, including Lake Austin North with an intersection of four metres at eight grams. Again, no basement drilling following it up. West Island, West Island, there's, there's graniferic dolerites recorded as a host and we're looking at four metres at 2.7. Again, in regolith, no basement follow-up. Similarly, Lake Austin target. We've got 10 of these targets, seven of them have got historical drilling over them with anomalous gold. No basement drilling. On top of that, the gravity work has really identified a parallel shear zone running 600 metres further to the east, east of that high, you can see there. And that gives us an opportunity under shallow cover to test a parallel opportunity for parallel loads. So a lot of upside potential in this district and we're looking forward to having the drill rig out, testing some of these new targets in the next five or six weeks. The work plan. We're continually running soil geochem. We've just finished the regional gravity. We've got a diamond drilling rig out at the moment, testing extensions to break a day. We've got drilling just completed at Louise, and we've got further follow-up we intend there. We've got air core drilling happening, as I mentioned, in the next five or six weeks, testing those new targets we've identified through integration of the gravity and magnetics in historical data. From that, we'll follow up those targets with, air, with RC drilling, testing back into the basement. And at the moment, we've got development work, studies happening in the background at the same time. We've got resources, we've got grade, we've got really strong met work. We're in an area with significant infrastructure and lots of upside potential. There's 440,000 ounces and we're currently growing that resource base. We're consistently getting high grade gold results. We've got potential to make new high grade discoveries. We've got a big system. We've got more than 20 kilometres of strike. Lots of activity happening in the next few months and multiple processing options within that district. We're well funded at the moment. All in all, we've got all the right ingredients to get a profitable near-term development scenario happening for Musgrave Minerals. Board, many people know Graham, stalwart of the industry. Myself, ex-WMC, BHP. Kelly Ross, Kelly Ross spent a lot of time with Independence and Resolute. And John Percival, um, Barclays Bank, finance background. So a diversified, well-experienced board. Thank you very much. Um, we've got a booth um, and happy to take questions to the booth later on today and over the next few days.